Hello, this is John Kenalopoulos here in our center in Athens, Greece, the Laser Vision Ambulatory Surgery Center. This is our uh, refractive suite. This is the special structure we've made for airflow, FS200, EX500 eczema laser, and we are preparing to do an Athens protocol. You can see here the treatment plan. We'll walk you through it. So this is a young gentleman born in 84. So he's almost uh, uh, 40. Uh, and we can all agree we have uh, significant keratoconus. The steepest keratometry is 50. Many pearls here. This means he's at least five diopters myopic. Keep that in mind. We can see the cone center, uh, evident on the back side of the cornea, less on the front side of the cornea. So you can see how more uh, steep the back side of the cornea is. Keratometries are 43, 47, uh, average 45.5, which do not uh, unfortunately underline the steepest part of the cornea, which is 51. So let's uh, jump and uh, look at the topography. So the topography we can see even with uh, Professor Placido's uh, contribution to cornea diagnostics that we have skewing of the Myers, uh, of course, the automated topography uh, uh, underlines the keratoconus here. Um, again, the average keratometries do not do justice to this keratoconus. We have a significant astigmatism. We'll jump to the uh, ray tracing, which we have reported is a great way to, uh, let's draw this a little bit to the left, to get a good feel for the refraction. Let's drag this a little bit to the left. Move this a little bit to the left. So we can see that the uh, Innovise uh, software gives us as the uh, refraction for this patient, minus 319, minus 480 at 55, we can see the significant coma that his cone is creating on the Pendicam maps and the uh, Hartman Shack wavefront uh, allows us to do the ray tracing and um, um, the uh, sine fluid imaging topography is seen here as well. And as we know, Innovise uses the interferometry data to create a 3D avatar eye and use the uh, sine fluid uh, 2000 rays uh, traced into the uh, eye and then the Hartman Shack 2000 rays from the retina to the lens surface and measure tilt as well. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to look at cornea epithelia. And this, uh, again, we've talked a lot about cornea epithelia and keratoconus. We can see this is an active cone because uh, the epithelium at the thinnest part of the cornea is thinner. As a response, as we're modeling, the epithelium has thickened around. So we will need to do a PTK in order to remove this epithelium because if we put uh, a standard uh, 60 micron epithelial removal, uh, we can see that's unequal. I mean, epithelial thickness varies from uh, almost uh, 45 microns uh, all the way up to uh, 65. So there's a lot of uh, remodeling here trying to mask uh, the keratoconus. So we're gonna go from the uh, planning from actually the assessment of the diagnostics to planning the treatment of this gentleman. Now, we saw the Innovise refraction uh, that was uh, minus 3.2, minus 4.5, astigmatism of 53 degrees. And this is his clinical refraction, minus one and a half, minus three at 65. So not completely different. And uh, we know from the epithelia that we saw that we are going to perform a PTK. So we're gonna go with 40 microns at eight millimeters to remove the epithelium. And here, the first thing that we do is we switch the refractive astigmatism to the topographic astigmatism. So the topographic astigmatism is something we respect because this will be a topography guided treatment. We will, uh, knowing that his spherical equivalent is by no means minus three, because we know his steepest keratometry is 51. So we know he's around a minus six, but through the multifocality of the cornea, he's able to find a sweet spot and find a spherical equivalent of minus three. So we're gonna treat the cylinder that he has and not the topographic full cylinder. So we're gonna go with minus three here on the cylinder. And we're gonna go with a minus two on the myopia because we know, if anything, he's definitely more myopic 
than uh, we're actually measuring. The cone is relatively central. This will be our treatment. We will treat this initially onto the epithelium because this is more sensitive to cycle rotation and then perform a PTK 40 microns, uh, eight millimeter diameter. The cornea will be already dehydrated from this treatment and we will remove uh, the epithelium at eight millimeters diameter instill riboflavin rapid, which is the avidro riboflavin diluted in uh, normal saline, and cross-link with six milliwatts for 15 minutes. That's our sweet spot in order to attain a very deep cross-linking line, and we'll report on this as well. We'd like postoperatively to see a cross-linking line that's at least under 50% of the uh, mid-stroma. Usually it's 70 and 80% and uniform across the nine millimeters that the uh, fabulous Avanti uh, uh, anterior seminal CT gives us, uh, documenting deep and in very good width cross-linking with this uh, technology. So uh, this is the evaluation. This is the treatment plan. We're ready to go. Uh, the only thing I may debate here is doing less sill and more myopia, but I think this is pretty much where we're gonna to stick to. This is a spherical equivalent of minus four. And the unknown, the X factor here is how much the, how much the synergy of cross-linking and um, the uh, topography guided fix will um, add to the flattening of the cornea. And um, that could be anywhere from three doctors all the way up to uh, 15 we've seen and we recorded. Again, John Canalopoulos bringing you into our uh, laser room, sharing with you all the logistics, uh, all the uh, very detailed diagnostics that we uh, uh, assess and study before we do the treatment. We know these treatments will be, the laser treatment will be about nine seconds, the PTK will be about 25 seconds and cross-linking 15 minutes but the work behind all this designing is uh, over two, three hours. Thanks so much for your attention. This is John Kanellopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, signing up.